ever pondered over your understanding of SoFi Technologies Inc. or the Vanek Semiconductor ETF, dear viewer? Starting with SoFi Technologies Inc., a digital personal finance company that's been making waves in the fintech industry. It's an enterprise that offers a range of financial products, including personal loans, home loans, and investment services. The reason why to compare it to SMH is to see which is a more stable, higher returning and lesser possibility for absolute loss. We have the Vanek Semiconductor ETF, a fund that tracks the performance of the largest and most liquid companies in the semiconductor industry. Which is similar field to SOFI? The appeal of such a fund lies in its diversification across numerous companies, reducing the risk associated with investing in individual stocks. Let's delve into the world of SOFI Technologies Inc, shall we? Over the past few years, the company has experienced quite a roller coaster ride. Starting with an initial balance of $10,000, the final balance came out to $5,798, representing a compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, of negative 15.44%. The company's journey was anything but smooth, with a standard deviation of 88.15%. It had its moments of triumph, with its best year return soaring to a whopping 115.84%. However, the worst year return plunged to negative 70.84%, underscoring the volatility of the investment. The maximum drawdown, or the largest single drop from peak to bottom, was a staggering negative 81.66%. Meanwhile, the sharp ratio a measure of risk-adjusted return was a mere 0.14 and the Sortino ratio, which differentiates harmful volatility from total overall volatility, was only slightly better at 0.28. The market correlation, or the degree to which Sophie's performance mimics the market, was relatively low at 0.38. This suggests that Sophie's performance was influenced by factors other than just the general market trends. Now let's talk numbers. In 2023, Sophie saw a significant increase in its net interest income, jumping to $1,261,740, a whopping 116% increase from the previous year. However, total non-interest income took a hit, decreasing by 13%. Meanwhile, total net revenue for the same year amounted to $2,122,789. Marking a substantial increase of 35% from the previous year. Despite this, the company suffered from an increase in total non interest expense and operated at a loss before income taxes. The net loss for 2023 was $300,742, a decrease from $320,407 in 2022 and $483,937 in 2021, showing an improvement of $19,665 or 6% compared to 2022 and $163,530 or 34% compared to 2021, overall still operated at a loss. Let's shift our focus to the Vanek Semiconductor ETF, a different beast altogether. This ETF started with the same initial balance as Sophie Technologies $10,000. However, unlike SoFi, it more than doubled its value, ending with a final balance of $21,077. The compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, a key measure of an investment's performance, stood at an impressive 25.79%. This is significantly higher than SoFi's negative 15.44%, showing a stronger positive growth trend. The standard deviation, which measures the volatility of returns, stood at 32.11%. This is lower than SoFi's 88.15%, suggesting less volatility and therefore potentially less risk. The ETF's best year return was a whopping 73.37%, while the worst year saw a dip of negative 33.52%. The maximum drawdown, which indicates the largest single drop from peak to bottom, was 40.05%, less severe than Sophie's 81.66%. The Sharpe Ratio, a measure that helps investors understand the return of an investment compared to its risk, was 0.80, substantially higher than Sophie's 0.14.
Similarly, the Sortino ratio, which differentiates harmful volatility from total overall volatility by using the asset's standard deviation of negative asset returns, was 1.34, again higher than SoFi's 0.28. Finally, the market correlation, which shows how closely the ETF follows the market, was 0.80, indicating a strong correlation with the market's movements. In summary, the Vanek Semiconductor ETF has shown strong performance over the years. It has managed to grow its initial investment, earned impressive returns, and maintained a reasonable level of risk. With a higher KGR, lower maximum drawdown, and better Sharp and Sortino ratios, the Vanek Semiconductor ETF seems to have a better performance. Having looked at both Sophie Technologies Inc. and Vanek Semiconductor ETF, which one stands out? Let's recap. Sophie has had a rocky journey, with its final balance decreasing to $5,798 from an initial $10,000. On the other hand, the Vanek Semiconductor ETF has more than doubled the initial investment, ending at $21,077. Sophie's best year return was impressive at 115.84%, but it was offset by a heart-wrenching worst year return of negative 70.84%. Vanek, while not reaching the same heights, offered a more consistent and less volatile performance. The value of ETFs and index funds becomes evident when we consider diversification and potential returns. They spread risk across a broader range of companies, offering a level of protection against the volatility of individual stocks. Subscribe for more content.